Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to install Home Assistant on Open Media 5 using Docker and Portainer. So uh, let's go ahead and jump over to my uh, desktop here and we'll take a look at how easy this actually is. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. Um, on the left side over here, uh, we've got Home Assistant's documentation for how to install on Docker. And then over on the right hand side, we've got Portainer set up. And I've also got another tab over here with uh, Open Media Vault so that we can then come over to shared folders so I can grab this path right here. So uh, let's go back over to Portainer because uh, we're gonna spend most of our time here. But um, if we come back over to the installation uh, documentation on Home Assistant's website, we can actually see that they've got some code right here. We could run this. Um, I'm just not a big fan of running it this way. So what I wanna do is actually copy this and open it up in a notepad. I wanna break this down line by line. Um, <clears throat> so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on with all of this so that it's not a jumbled mess. So let's do this. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so the first line, we can actually delete that. Um, this is just the, the Docker command itself. Uh, so we can get rid of that. So basically everything that we've got left here is what we're gonna put into um, our Docker container here. So uh, let's go into containers and here you can see all of the containers that I've got up and running right now. So we're gonna go ahead and add a new one. Now I'm gonna grab Home Assistant right here and I'm gonna give that as the name. And then I'm gonna grab that full line and I'm gonna put that in for the image. So uh, the next thing we need to do, um, it says, uh, uh, well, let's just go down and start from top to bottom. We'll do uh, environmental variables. So our environmental variable here is, is just one. We've only gotta do one this time. And that's just gonna be time zone. Oops. And I'm, uh, close to Denver. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. So that means we've actually got those two and that one done already. Um, so our next thing is gonna be path to our configuration folder. So that's gonna be under volume. So we can actually tell that by this dash V at the beginning. So if we click on map additional volumes, we're gonna have a couple of lines pop up. Now what we need to do is actually bind to these two. So we're gonna do in the container, we're gonna do slash uh, config, just like so. And then for the path to the configuration, we're gonna come back over here to Open Media Vault. We're gonna go to our configuration uh, line right here. Uh, if you don't have this absolute path, um, sometimes this doesn't show up. If it doesn't, uh, what you can do is come up to this header uh, bar up here. Any of these are gonna have a drop down, So you can click that drop down, go to columns and then toggle absolute path on. Now I don't need to do that because I've already got it there, but that's how you would turn it on if you don't. Now, because I'm lazy, I'm just gonna right click this. I'm gonna go to inspect. You can see that this line right here is highlighted. And right here you can see it says files and config. So I'm just gonna double click that, right click and go copy. Come back over to here. I'm gonna paste this in. And then I'm gonna type in home, oops, assistant like that. So that takes care of that line. Now, the next thing we've got is their network. And if we come over here to network, we can switch from bridge to host. And oh, one other thing that actually wasn't in there uh, that I pulled from further down on this page um, is this port right here. We need to open up port 8123. So we're gonna come up here where it says publish a new uh, network port. We're gonna type in 8123 and 8123, just like that. And we'll go ahead at that point and go ahead and click on uh, deploy the container. Now this may take a little bit of time depending on the processing power of your server, that sort of thing. Uh, but we'll let this sit for a minute and then uh, it should pop up and let us know that it's done here pretty quickly. Okay, so there we go. It has popped back over to our containers list. So of course, if you've watched my other videos, the first thing I like to do is uh, click on this logs file right here just to make sure that everything looks like it's done what it needs to do and it looks like it has. Um, if you're ever not sure, uh, you can actually just come over here, grab that, um, put in that port number and click go. And just like that, Home Assistant appears to be up and running. So, um, oops. Let's go ahead and create an account. I'm, uh, nah, let's see if it finds, there's Denver for us, like so. 
I'm at about 6,300 feet. Uh, so we'll go click next. Um, and I'm just gonna click finish for right now because I don't want to set anything up. Um, this is all wrong. This is not where I am located at all, but there's Home Assistant up and running in Docker. Okay guys, so there you go. There is how simple it is to set up a Home Assistant in Docker or, or Open Media Vault in this case, using Docker and Portainer. A pretty simple process overall. Um, I like to break things down when there's a command like that that it showed in their documentation. I like to break it down line by line just so that it's easier to read. So I'm not trying to kind of figure out where the breaks are and that sort of thing. Um, so I like to break it down line by line like I showed in this video. Uh, if that helps, I, I hope that helps uh, anybody who's not uh, super familiar with Docker yet. Uh, if you are, maybe I taught you something you didn't know or, or a quick way to make that easier to read. Anyway, um, I think that pretty much covers uh, everything I needed to cover in this video. I will have links to everything in the description down below so that you can uh, go over to the Home Assistant website and grab that same bit of code that I did to make this possible. So. Um, if you enjoy this kind of content, if you're interested in, in, in Open Media Vault tutorials and that sort of thing, definitely get subscribed. Uh, that's kind of what the focus of this channel has been for the past few months. And it seems like um, it's, it's kind of where my niche is uh, and, and my, my channel growth has been uh, pretty crazy uh, since I switched to doing this. And I wanna thank everybody for following along this far. So like I said, check out the description down below for all the information you're gonna need there. Um, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here as always. Thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.